Give me your name, and we're here with Indivisibles. Sure. Which is uh, new my energy. name's uh, my name's Earl Grootwagen. I work for Lab Zero Games, and we're working on the uh, uh, our brand new title, Indivisible. It's right there. Oh, right, right, right there. Okay. Yeah. Look at the. Okay, got it. No, no, I mean, I'm pointing at the indivisible. Oh, Sorry. oh, I see. I got you. Okay, cool. Because it's framed behind you. So Sorry, it's got a little goofy interview today. <laughs> it's been a long day for these guys. So this is not a direct sequel to Skullgirls, and not even in the same world. But it's just by the same developer, so it has a similar aesthetic. But uses the Skullgirls engine. Mm -hmm. So this one is a RPG about... Tell me a little bit about your main character, and like, give me your elevator pitch, basically. Sure. Okay. Uh, it is about... Ajna, a young girl who uh, has her life kind of thrown into turmoil and uh, she discovers that she has the power to absorb certain people in the world um, and uh, she goes through uh, the world kind of uh, discovering her, her power and, and discovering kind of so there's a lot of like introspection in, in it and she grows and as she absorbs new uh, they're called incarnations that she can summon in battle. Um, as she absorbs new ones and, and uh, absorbs new abilities, uh, she can traverse the world in, in new ways, and uh, she'll also grow more as a person. Um, and as she goes, it's kind of the core of the, the game, and it's kind of ethos is, is based in Southeast Asian mythology, and um, it, but it's got a, a lot of influences from around the world and different uh, cultures as well. And part of the game and part of the appeal is for Ajna to uh, confront a lot of these challenges and uh, kind of through the course of the game learn that there's not always a, a, a clear solution to problems and it's not always, you can't just bash your way through, through difficulties to, to find a resolution and sometimes it takes a lot of introspection and um, um, considering that there are other viewpoints in the world. So it's a lot of personal growth, it's a story of personal growth. Now, yes. I haven't seen the story at all, but I have been able to play the game and it is a really fun sort of uh, I guess the call the combat like almost turn-based action combat sort of. It, I don't think I've ever played another game with a similar style of combat. Awesome. You have a, a combat like a wheel, I guess is the word I'll call it. Each character is on one of the face buttons, and there's a meter that charges for that character's attack. And then when that character attacks, you press the face button that corresponds to the character. So you have four characters in play at a time. Those are the four incarnations mm -hmm. of the main character. And you have four of them in play at a time, and they each have different abilities. Like I had two that were for attack, one that was a healer, and one that had a big shield for defense. And then that plays into as well this fight, this sort of fighting game-esque meter, like a super meter, which you can build by attacking and doing like combos. I guess I'll call them combos. Mm -hmm. And you use that to go forward, and then once you have that meter built up, you can use that ultimate attack. And every character has ultimate attacks, and different they have different effects. Some are heals, some are attacks, some are defense abilities. And that is really unique. I've never seen a game that really designed itself around this sort of combat wheel. Um, and it's not just about combat. I mean, you mentioned earlier that the solution isn't always combat to the game. Uh -huh. But I really like the, the platforming and exploration elements. There's a lot of exploration going on where you need to go back to where you were before and use the newly obtained ability. Very Metroid-esque. Totally calling it Metroid esque right now because you're going back over the same area but with new abilities. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so your new abilities are going to let you go in a different part of that area. Exactly. And we want to, in that Metroidvania vein, um, we, we want to reward exploration um, and, and give, as you go through the game and get new abilities, you'll be able to kind of access new areas. Um, and, or, and revisit areas previously and, and discover, oh, I didn't, I didn't notice I could reach this before. Um, uh, but now that you have kind of upgraded traversal abilities, you'll be able to... to What's your, your biggest, most proud thing in this game, your biggest inspiration to the game and like what you're most proud of about it right now? It's still in a little bit of a rough state. Definitely, it's not, I mean, it's not coming out until quarter two, 2018. So right now it's for backers only from the Kickstarter. And then it will be, a, when will we have a public demo out at some point? Yes, we're gonna, the current, build on the show floor here at Anime Expo is uh, we're fine-tuning a, a, a little a few more things kind of smoothing out some of the blemishes but that'll be available to backers very very soon okay and then what about public demo no public demo maybe um, maybe later I don't, I don't remember if maybe? that that backer preview is going to be released wide but I, I mean it, it it's hard to stop backers from just sharing it so I think we're just gonna give it to backers first and then shortly thereafter make it a little uh, uh, public um, uh, but, I'm biggest. not 100% sure, but yeah, I think so. All right, back to the biggest inspiration question for this game. What was your biggest inspiration for building this game? My biggest inspiration is fighting games and kind of resource management, because in fighting games you're always kind of 
um, you know, you have resources like your super meter where you have to kind of budget how much you're going to use for defense or tactics or, or trying to get in and get that hit uh, to be able to do a combo, or you're going to save it until you hit it, get a hit and be able to rip off your, your super attack. Um, and you know, incorporating those kinds of elements in the actual battle without making it without making the, the skill bar too high for fighting, uh, as it often is in a lot of fighting games, um, but keeping it interesting and having that resource management aspect in addition to the semi-turn-based uh, combat. Do you think there's any skill cliff in, in Indivisible? Is there any sort of like point where you'll come up at and you'll just be like, no, and you'll throw your controller down and be like rage quitting for a little while? Um, it's hard to say because it's still really early, but we're, we're actively kind of fine-tuning. Um, we, we want critical bass stuff to, de to not be too difficult, but um, because we want to reward effort and exploration and and, um, and finesse, we want to have some of the secret stuff, like any sort of like secret bosses, be either behind a lot of like careful platforming or uh, have them be a really rewarding fight where it's, it's really difficult to, to overcome. Indivisible is coming to you guys quarter two of 2018 on Steam. Uh, fall of 2018, so I think that's quarter three. But Q3, Q2. Q3, Q4. Four? Did... Well, are we on a counting calendar or a regular calendar? Fall is Q3, isn't it? It really depends on where your anyway, date is. But the point is, <laughs> we're coming in 2018. And st on Steam? Uh, it will be on Steam, yes. Release on Steam, yeah. And Steam. I've had the chance to play it today, and I really have enjoyed it. I think there's not a lot of games out there that have the, the mechanics, uh, if any, the mechanics that are similar to this. Uh, if you like platforming or action games or combat, like combat that's skill based, that's managing and resources. This is a pretty fun game for those things. And I didn't even get to see any of the story. I'm sure there's a jam packed story behind it, too. That's the plan. A story of personal growth. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for your time.